Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another Python tutorial. So in this series, we're basically going to be building out a cryptocurrency tracker application using Python. So let me just give you guys a quick illustration of what you'll be building by the end of this tutorial. So if I bring this over, uh, what we have here is a GUI application. Um, on the left, we have all the cryptocurrencies available from the API that we're using for this. And then there's a search box as well. So let's say I wanted to track the prices of Bitcoin. I would search that and then this will filter to that. Then I select the exact one I want, click select cryptos, and then that gets added to my selected cryptos. And it says the cryptos below are currently being tracked. What that means is basically if I were to close this application and reopen it again, uh, it knows that I want to track Bitcoin and I don't have to re-input that. So let's say we wanted to track Bitcoin and Ethereum. Let me just select Ethereum as well, two of them. Uh, basically, when I click on track cryptos now, it will run through the API in real time and then get all the data that's required and give me this neat little dashboard. So it gives me the uh, current price for Bitcoin and Ethereum, the 24 high, 24 low, price change, all time high, all time low. Obviously, this is customizable to whatever you guys want to include. So it also gives me a little uh, line chart at the bottom, which will show me um, the last 14 days or last seven days, I can't remember which one it is, uh, of price changes for both the selected coins. Now, Obviously, you can go ahead and, I don't know, delete Ethereum if you only wanted to track Bitcoin, click on track, and you should get only Bitcoin related data. Now, like I said before, this data is actually saved and handled in CSV. So if I close this off, we run it uh it will actually remember what my selected choices were so i don't no longer have to you know search bitcoin again i can just click on track cryptos uh and then it will find the information for me so um that's basically what we're going to be covering um there's also the let me just run this again there's also the extra bit which uh if you wanted to let's say delete a specific uh selected cryptocurrency you just click on it and then click on delete selected cryptos and that will basically clear that off um cool so let's close this off um that's a little demo done and let's start coding it ourselves so first things first what we're going to be doing is importing a bunch of libraries so anything to do with tikinta is going to be to do with the gui so the uh graphical user interface matplotlib is going to be used in order to plot our line chart and any visualizations that we have uh, and we're also importing the figure canvas tk aggregator so that we can um, take the plot that we get from matplotlib and integrate it with tikinta we're using requests as we're going to be scraping some data from an api we're using threading so that we can start a separate process to our main thread and our application won't lag we're going to use date time to basically um, have some date time formatted data and then pandas to do all of our data related tasks. So if you're not familiar with Tikinta, Matplotlib or pandas or requests uh, or threading, I'll link some tutorials in the description and feel free to watch those and familiarize yourselves. Um, cool. So to begin with, what we're going to be doing is actually exploring the date API a little bit and basically creating the functions that are going to get our data for us. So in order to um, allow the user to select cryptocurrency, we actually need to have the list of cryptocurrencies. So that's the first function. So fetch list of cryptos from CoinGecko, which is the API we're using. So create a function, we'll call this get uh, crypto list. And then I'm just gonna do the URL. Um, Going to copy and paste this as i don't want to type it out so that's the url that we're going to be using and then we create a new variable called response and then we assign that to request.get url now usually you can get away with just typing url but we'll also put in a timeout of let's just say one for now and basically that's to make sure that our request doesn't take too long to return and we can actually stop the application when it's taking too long so once we get the data, we're just going to return response.json. And I know that the response is JSON because I've kind of already explored this. So I run this now and then type in get crypto list. And I run that. Here we go. We get a list of objects where each object basically has data related to all the available cryptocurrencies that we can select. 
So we have the ID, we have the symbol and name. Now when I checked that some of the cryptos had duplicate names, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to use the ID for most operations and we're going to display all three uh, to the user when they're selecting stuff. Um, so that's our first function done. Uh, this function will fetch all of the available cryptocurrencies for us. Um, the next thing we want to do is actually get the data related to a specific coin. So when we saw in our application, we were we had a table that basically showed the price, the 24 hour high, low, the price difference, etc. So to get that sort of data, you need to um, have a function that gets the data related to related to each coin. So we'll create a new function. We'll call this um, the fetch data. And then we'll make sure that this can handle multiple crypto IDs. So crypto IDs. Cool. So this function will expect a list. I'm just gonna put a comment down. Uh fetch crypto price data for coin gecko once again. So what we wanna do here is put in the URL uh as per usual. And just gonna do an F string here. And basically what we're going to do in this URL is we're going to provide a few parameters. Uh, so the parameters that we're going to provide, first one, the currency that we're using. Now, obviously, I've gone through the documentation of this API, which is why I know what parameters to use. If you guys would like to, feel free to head over to the documentation and check it out for yourselves as well. So I'm going to be using Great British Pounds as the currency. Uh, the IDs of the cryptos I want to filter to uh, what I'm going to do is basically use the join method, so comma, and then dot join crypto IDs. Now what join does is it basically takes uh, whatever's in a list. For example, let's say our IDs were BTC and ETH. What this, what, by doing comma and then dot join this, we basically, it takes whatever separator we give it and then it joins each item of that list into a string with that separator in the middle. So that's what's going to happen. It's just going to make this a string and take whatever's in that list of crypto IDs and separate it with a comma. So next thing, we're going to basically um, order this data. We don't really have to, but uh, I prefer to. And we're going to order it by market cap uh, in descending order. Then we can set the amount um, of data we're going to receive per page. I'm just going to set that to something generous like 250. Uh, and then I'm going to navigate to page one. Cool. Now that we have the URL and parameters ready, we can fire this request up like the previous one. So response is equal to request.get URL parameters equals the parameters we just created. And then set the timeout to one. And then lastly, we'll just return the response.json. Run this up. And now we can actually run this function. Uh, I know these IDs beforehand. Uh, obviously, the IDs can be, uh, you can find the IDs in here from the first function. So let's run that first, actually. Get crypto list, let's say. And we'll just look at the first item of the list. So what we have here is the IDs as well. So I'm going to use zero coin for this one. Uh, probably not the best choice, but let's go with zero coin. And I know another one is Bitcoin already from checking this before. So let's go with two. When I run this function, what you'll notice, if I can open this in text editor, we get a list and there's two items in that list. So the first one is a dictionary, second one's dictionary as well. And each dictionary has the data related to each of the uh, IDs that we put in. So this is the data that was being displayed earlier on in the dashboard. I took the current price, I took the uh, 24 hour high, low, uh, and I took the all time high and the all time low data and basically displayed all of that. You can obviously pick more data and display that as well, but that's really up to you. So that's two functions done. We made pretty good progress. Um, we're grabbing data um, well so far. One more function we're going to need to basically grab data. Um, Got this wrong crypto to grab data is going to be the one that gets the data for the line chart so that's going to be the slightly more complicated one and in that function what we're going to do is basically request historical data for our crypto ids uh, and that's going to include the prices for the last seven days so let's create the function um, 
fetch uh, historical price data from coin gecko, let's say. Now the function is going to be called fetch historical data and it's going to expect crypto IDs just as the previous function as a list. So the URL, let me just copy and paste that. Um, right here. Uh, and then what I'm going to do here is basically get rid of this because I don't think that's going to be required. And then we're going to create a dictionary called all data, which is where all of our data is going to be placed. So, um, what we want to do since we're dealing with multiple crypto um, ids here we're going to have to do two different requests uh the actually um i'm gonna have to do an f string here and this url is going to be used later on so what we're going to be doing here is um we're going to have to request E, uh, the data for each coin separately because uh, that's how I research this at least I'm not sure if there's a way to get all of them at the same time but for now we're gonna have to iterate through each crypto ID uh, and basically use that ID in this URL to get the data the historical data for that individual one so what I'm gonna do is type in a loop so let's say for crypto uh, ID in crypto ids my parameters are basically going to remain the same i'm going to use currency to be gbp and days well let's just set that to seven because i just want seven days worth of historical data from today so copy this url and this is where i basically start typing the the request so response equals requests dot get gonna do an f string here and then oh and then paste this stuff right in here and id will now get replaced by the crypto id variable because we want the data for each of the cryptos that we're going through um let's take a look at that that should be good and then we want to pass in the parameters params equals params and then timeout let's just set that to one as per usual then we'll do data equals uh response.json cool so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to return the data so what this is going to do just to show you guys what the data looks like is it's going to run through the first crypto id and then it's just going to break and return the data it won't go through all of them just for now um so fetch historical data and i'll put in uh zero one coin and let's just say bitcoin i'll run it and basically what you'll see is that um you get a dictionary and that dictionary contains uh an a list of lists so basically the first item is the first day second uh i think it's in hours as well if i'm not wrong it's a timestamp so um, we'll have to basically convert this timestamp into date time uh, using the date time module. And then this is basically the price. So what we have to do first of is navigate into the prices list. That's the first thing. So, and we have to do this for both cryptos as well. So this is just one at this moment. So what we'll do is create a new variable called bros and we'll assign that to uh, the data and then go into prices. So that will basically put us inside this big array of um, data that contains the timestamp and prices for each thing. Now that we have that, we'll create an empty array for dates, which we'll populate, and empty array for prices, which we'll populate as well. Now we'll loop through the data that we have in rows. So for row and rows, so for each one of these uh, lists inside this 2D list, what we're going to do is uh we're going to figure out the timestamp and price so we're going to just get the data out out of the array first so we'll do timestamp comma price equals row what that's going to do is it's going to take the first thing and assign it to timestamp variable second thing will go in price variable um, for each of these arrays 
And then once we have them, let's just convert the timestamp from milliseconds to a uh, to seconds and then to a date time object. So it's currently in milliseconds. So convert timestamp from ms to s and then to a date time object. So to do this, we'll just do date equals uh, date time dot utc from timestamp. And then to get the uh, seconds from milliseconds, we just divide the timestamp by a thousand. That will give us a uh, date time object for the date instead of these milliseconds that we don't really understand. And then in terms of prices, I mean, the, the number's already pretty much easy to understand, so we don't have to manipulate that at all. So we'll, do, we'll take that dates array that we prepared and then we'll append to that the dates that we just figured out and then we'll take the prices array and append to that the price that we just figured out. Now this data is obviously only for the first crypto uh, that we're analyzing. So what we have to do is store this data for dates and prices for that first crypto into this all data dictionary so that we can then return it in the end. So what I'm going to do here is at the end of the loop, I'll say we're going to take all data and then the crypto ID that we just analyzed or we just got the historical data for uh, within this loop, we're going to keep that as the key of this dictionary. And then the um, value is going to be another dictionary where dates is going to be set to the dates array and prices is going to set to the prices array. And this will basically continue for, so basically it will do this these steps for both the cryptos and then store both the crypto related data under the individual IDs in this uh, dictionary. And then at the end, once everything is done, we'll just return uh, all data. I think this needs to come back one. Well, yeah, and that should basically do it. So if I run this now and we do uh, fetch historical data for zero coin and Bitcoin and run it again, Boom. What we see is a dictionary, which is all data. Then the key is obviously the ID of the um, the, big, uh, the coin that we're analyzing. Then we have a dates, uh, which is basically all of the dates and date time objects. And then if I open this in text editor, we'll also have a prices. There we go, prices. And that's all the prices. And they're obviously in the right order, so we don't really have to, you know, double check. So this date will correspond to this price. Then if we scroll down further, the second key is Bitcoin, which is the second one that we analyze and same format. We have dates uh, and then the prices as well. Cool. So that's all of our data ready. And that's basically going to cover it all for today's tutorial. So um, we've made pretty good progress, managed to set up all the data collection for this uh, program. In the next tutorial, we'll start doing a bit of the UI and maybe some functions as well. Hope you guys have found this tutorial useful and are excited for the next part of the series. And um, if you guys could subscribe and help me get to 100,000, that will really, really mean a lot. And I shall see your beautiful faces in the next tutorial. Peace. <laughs>